So how do we prevent or treat blood clots during pregnancy? Usually with twice daily injections of low molecular weight heparin and with or without conversion to standard unfractionated heparin around delivery. And why would we convert to standard unfractionated heparin around delivery? Because it's shorter acting and it clears from the circulation more quickly and it gives women more options about what anesthetic they can have. The most popular form of medication for prevention of pain now around the time of delivery is the epidural anesthetic, which requires an injection into the space around the spine. And anesthesiologists do not want to administer that to anybody who has a long-acting anticoagulant in their circulation. So what precautions are taken at delivery? We want to hold the heparin around the time of delivery to reduce the risk of bleeding to allow the opportunity for an epidural or a spinal. So we substitute those pneumatic compression devices uh, that you saw in pictures earlier. And what about after delivery, that highest risk period? Well, we want to get the anticoagulation restarted uh, and we want women to stay on it for the that highest risk period for blood clotting, that six weeks or so after delivery. Now, women who are going to be on lifelong go back on anticoagulation because they're on anticoagulation lifelong. They can go back on their warfarin when their risk of bleeding around childbirth is reduced. Now, the good news for women who plan to breastfeed is neither low molecular weight heparin or even warfarin are, uh, are contraindicated in breastfeeding. Breastfeeding uh, this is okay for women who are either taking low molecular weight heparin or warfarin. We just don't know about these new oral anticoagulants whether breastfeeding is a safe thing to do while a woman is on these new oral anticoagulants. Now, um, one of the questions, though, is uh, do birth control pills cause blood clots? Well, birth control pills, per se, don't cause blood clots, but they are a risk factor for blood clots. Well, why? Birth control pills with estrogen increase the risk of a blood clot about threefold. So a woman taking birth control pills has about a 1 in 300 risk of having a blood clot each year. That's not a real high risk. I mean, they aren't, that's not a high enough, they aren't good enough odds that you would bet a lot of money in Las Vegas on it. The patches, the birth control patches and rings double the risk over pills. And some pills carry a higher risk than other pills. You may have heard in the news about the Yaz birth control pills. They carry about the same risk as the patches and rings. We used to think that the birth control injections, the shots, uh, the depomedroxyprogesterone acetate, otherwise known as Depo-Provera injections, we thought that they were completely safe to use in women with a history of blood clots. Well, now with some more studies, maybe they may slightly increase the risk of blood clots. They may increase the risk of blood clots up to twofold. So in women who aren't already on a blood thinner, maybe that's not a pass. And the risk of blood clots is much higher in women who have thrombophilia, a known risk factor for blood clots, or have a history of clots unless they are already on anticoagulation. So we don't want to provoke blood clots in women who have risk factors, like a history of blood clots or thrombophilia, by prescribing hormonal birth control that has estrogen, uh, unless they are already on anticoagulants. Now, one of the things that frosts me is a woman who comes in pregnant and says, I was told I couldn't use any birth control because I've had a blood clot. 
Well, there are plenty of safe alternatives to women can have their families when they want to have their families because there are other safe methods of birth control if a woman has had blood clots or has thrombophilia. Not the methods that were on the previous slide, but there are alternatives. There are the classic barrier methods like the diaphragm. There are spermicides, the foams, jellies uh, that can be bought at the drugstore. There, are, there is the copper intrauterine device. There is surgical sterilization like tubal ligation and vasectomy. There are progesterone-only pills, the progesterone-only intrauterine device, and the progestin implant. And then other hormonal birth control is an option, perhaps, if a woman is on anticoagulation. Now, one of the questions that I get is what if, what if I'm using anticoagulation and I start having heavy periods and the only ways my doctor uh, can manage it is with um, hormones? Well, in that situation, it may be possible to use certain birth control pills, patches, and rings. Um, the levonorgestrel intrauterine device, however, may be a safer alternative, as is progestin injections, the progestin implant, and then there's, if a woman ha is choosing to have no more children, the lining of the uterus may be able to be destroyed through a procedure called endometrial ablation, and all of those may be options before a hysterectomy. And then a, a little known complication of a lifetime on anticoagulation is bleeding at the time of ovulation. Each time a woman during her childbearing years releases an egg, there may be a little bit of bleeding at the site where the egg is released. Now, in a woman who's not on anticoagulation and doesn't have a bleeding disorder, that may not result in any significant bleeding whatsoever. But in a woman who's on anticoagulation, that may lead to more than a trivial amount of bleeding. And combined hormonal birth control pills, injections and implants can actually prevent that type of hemorrhage. Our progestin-only pills and IUD don't. So that's a consideration when we're trying to manage women who have had not only heavy bleeding, but had hemorrhages from their ovaries and are on anticoagulants. Now the other question I said we'd talk about is does postmenopausal hormone therapy cause blood clots? And again, it doesn't cause blood clots, but it's a risk factor. Hormonal therapy increases the risk two to three fold. And again, the absolute risk is one in 300 per year. And again, the risk is much higher in women with thrombophilia or of a history of clots unless they're on anticoagulation. <clears throat> 